We are live. Do shut that down. Do an audio check real quick. Checking audio. One, two, three. Cool, we're good. I'm sending you something slightly not safe for work. <laughs> I know we're live and I just said that, but yep. this was worth it. Okay. It's taking its time though. But anyway, ready? Are you ready? Uh, give me just a second. I need to put volume control. Now I'm ready. I'm hovered over the okay. button. Okay. 22. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to In30 or the security In30. My name is Hiam. There is Tom. And Happy New Year. Right? Happy New Year. We, we made it. It's... A, a, Let's hold on the happy. Let's just stay on the new year. Let's it, stay on the new year. I, I, I would go with that. The so, calendar rolled over. All right. So this is episode 282, and I know it's been a really long time. The problem is we had a topic ready for last year. Somebody actually asked us to talk about Somebody in our signal group, and we'll get to that in a second, asked us to talk about Bitcoin and NFTs and things like that. And we haven't spoken about them in a while. The problem is in Tom accurate, it was eerily accurate. What Tom said is that one, we don't know, we don't know what we don't know. And there's a lot we don't know. And two, we're going to say something wrong and people are going to jump down our throats and it kind of, it, 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 he's not wrong. Let's just say that he's not wrong with that. So, or, or we not gonna... even necessarily wrong. Cryptocurrency has become as heated as religion or politics around the, uh, the dinner table, so to speak. So um, and, we're not going to touch this. The topic is too inflammatory. So my problem was, and, and, and of course, we're not going to touch it yet. I'm going to talk about it for a second. I just, people are just saying, what are, grandma's asking what are NFTs? And we can tell you what, what the grandma answered to what are NFTs, but I know people want a little bit more. And that's where the problem is, that little bit more, because, because, Again, like you said, it's very polarizing. So I, so Tom was going to do his homework and we were going to talk about that. And then we came up with a better topic. So again, we don't want to bring you just like, there's no news or there's another crypto ransomware attack or more log for J it's, it's let's talk about something else. And unfortunately, Google's killing another very important thing. And I won't tease it that it's email, but it's sort of email. So Many years ago, Google offered uh, Google, e uh, what is it called? Email for your domain, uh, Gmail for your domain. So you wanted a Gmail account at whatever, at your domain, at Heim Time, at Samurai Link 3 or wherever. And no, and, and you, and you signed up and Google's like, we'll give you like tw a basic admin console, 25 email accounts and whatever. And most people literally used it for one email account. And that was their home on the net. And then, and then they made you a really second class citizen. If, and, but anyway, it was free. Like I had at heimtime.com and you can email me and I would get it. We had, we have info at in30.net which is going to be another problem I just thought of right now. So we have that. The problem is we're getting notices, and I got one today, that starting July 1st, Google is axing that, and you have to go to $5 per user per month. And unfortunately, $5 per user per month is a $60 tax when most people are just sending very not that many emails per day, per week, per month. And that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> The whole Google apps for your domain rollout has always been kind of weird for Google. Like it was kind of a side channel revenue stream. It didn't have, you know, there were a bunch of users, but not a huge driver of revenue for the company. It wasn't like, you know, Outlook.com or the various, you know, hosted Microsoft products for hosted exchange. It, it wasn't ever a core tenant of the company, but it always kind of had aspirations of being one of these big 
services that you could provide to businesses and, you know, small businesses and mom and pop shops. And it was a great idea because, you know, around that time, Gmail had substantially changed email. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to be the old man who's telling you to get off my lawn when I say this, uh, but Gmail did revolutionize webmail. Before Gmail, webmail was awful. It was slow. It was filled with spam. It was just not pleasant to look at or use. And most people just used their email clients. And most of the time, that was Outlook. Um, when Gmail came around, it was quite literally a game changer. Overnight, uh, through their, their invite-only Gmail program, um, you know, webmail became something that was enjoyable to use. It had you know, very minimal spam. Google was really good at curtailing this stuff. Um, and, you know, the promise of having, hey, Gmail, but at your own domain was extremely lucrative. And not only that, but the price was right. It was free. Uh, and, you know, myself and I know a bunch of other tech people, when we, you know, did work for clients, we just said, eh, well, Google is giving away email for free. We'll just set you up with this. It's, it's a low hassle. You don't have to touch it. Um, just like you're saying, most people are sending, you know, one to two emails a month, maybe, unless they're a super heavy power user. Most of the time you just need it to receive email or receive, uh, two factor codes or really just to get the click to verify your account. Link. And honestly, that's what 99% of my email traffic is today is to have an anchor for all of my online identities tied to one place. Google made that trivial. And unfortunately, yeah, they're pulling the rug out. And they're giving you, I guess they're giving you six months to do it, which is a different topic for a different day. But like you said, people are setting up and you got a domain and then said, somebody said, hey, can we get email at it? And people don't want to pay more money. So Gmail did it. And, and we saw the writing on the wall, but I thought that they would stop there. So they would say it used to be you can have 25 emails then it went to you can't have any more than what you had you want drive space no that's at the old rate which was astronomically expensive they were cutting back but like i said and like you said most people just literally wanted just an email to be something different that they didn't really con that they controlled but they weren't really sending email like i don't send email from there it was it was for recruiters or for wherever to tell people that you can to make you look a little more professional on the internet and, and they're cutting it off. And now a lot of people are scrambling and. And I'm, I'm not super worried about us. Right? And I'm not super worried. If, if you're a tech person and listening to the show, chances are you're at the very least a power user of technology. Right. I'm not super concerned because, yeah, we know we can log into our consoles and change MX records and find some other place to live. And that's that's not terrible. It's super annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Right. The whole idea of having email at your domain is that if a provider goes bad, just like Google is doing to people, you can just find somewhere else or pay Google for the privilege of using their uh, kind of broken account systems because apps accounts have uh, never really reached the same level of fidelity that standard at gmail.com accounts have. Um, that's something to fix on Google's end. Um, but what I am worried about is that, you know, a lot of these clients who I don't even remember half of them anymore. I've, I've had a, a storied career. Um, you know, they had people, they had technical people set the stuff up for them because they didn't know how. And now they're getting this email that says, hey, pony up cash or we're shutting you off. Well, they might not have any better options than to just pay up. And I'm not saying that's a terrible option. It's, it's really not. You know, five bucks per user per month is, uh, from what we've discovered, fairly industry standard, no matter where you go. Whether it's, you know, Office 365 or Fastmail, that five bucks per user per month fee is kind of just the cost of doing business. The downside is that, you know, if you were looking for alternatives, if you were looking to move, if you are angry at Google for doing this, yeah, it's a technical chain to move this stuff over. And some people don't know what DNS records are, let alone how to change them. So, so my problem 
my issue is I deal with, like you said, untechnical people. Not that's one. But second, I also deal with with people who are very price conscious. So when this was free, it was great. And they said, oh, we'll give everyone an email. You came into the company, you got an email, whether you used it or not, no big deal. And now it's saying, now five, that's $60 per person per year, which like, for example, I work, I'm the public information committee officer and we wanted to have a separate email for the communications department. And the town, the borough is like, no, that's 60 bucks a year. Where where are we going to get that money? Because it's tax revenue that we could be using. And th- so people give all these emails out and now they're going to have to start thinking about how do we either take them away, do all they, how to use it? What do we have to do? Because $60 a year per user is not the cheapest thing. If it's just you, fine, $60 for doing business. I cost that, call it inflation. I mean, call literally call it inflation and be done with it and you're okay. But if you gave one to your entire family and now you have to tell your entire family, oh, by the way, you cost me $60 and you cost me $60, that's going to be, that's going to be a challenge. And I don't know, we were just talking about other things to go. So do you want to talk recommendations? Yeah. So I, I had kind of a terrifying realization. And, and you can go back years, uh, years behind into the show to to get all the gory details and drama here. But I had the terrible realization that, hey, if something happens to my at gmail.com email address, I'm locked out of quite literally almost every facet of my digital life. No matter what account it is backed by the at gmail.com email address, which means that if Google, if their automated systems go haywire, if I'm banned for whatever reason... I've just lost access to the entire world online. Uh, and that was not an acceptable risk. So I decided to put email on my domain. I did not want to use a free apps account. I wanted to make sure that I was paying for something because the, the thing I really want in an email provider for a domain is a simple business model, right? Google's model of free and then there's user data and collection and advertising and stuff like it. There's a lot of moving parts there and they don't always work in my favor. And I just wanted something clean and simple to understand. I want to pay someone money and have them give me email and calendar service at my domain. And that is the end of the business conversation. Um, And to me, the best answer there, and I I had several recommendations for various places to go, but was Fastmail. Um, it, this isn't an ad. I literally am paying them. I, I am losing money on this conversation. Uh, but with Fastmail, it's again five bucks per user per month. Uh, but a user for Fastmail is just the login. It's not email addresses. I quite literally have like twelve different domains and email addresses associated with my one Fastmail account, and it's sixty bucks a year, or I think it's it's fifty bucks a year if you pay upfront for the entire um and yeah it works it's boring the email is fast it's snappy i don't have spam problems the calendar is fine it integrates with imap and pop and whatever you want to hook to it um it's got a lot of nice little features but nothing super fancy nothing super flashy and honestly that's the best recommendation i can give it is extremely simple and it works. Uh, and it has a really simple business proposition. You hand them money, they give you email. That's the end of the conversation. Uh, well, but there's plenty of this. others out there too. So I was going to ask you, so you're saying that with Fastmail, it's one, it's a, it's a username and you can have a whole bunch of emails under that. Yes. Is that because you're managing the MX records on your host? No, I, so yes and no. So if for a custom domain, you set up fast mails, right? So like I've got, uh, you know, a, a gaming website that, and I've got my own personal domain and I've got like joke domains for projects that may or may not go anywhere. So in my, uh, in my domain registrar, I just go in, paste in the MX records for fast mail and some like DK I am and other, other like email authorization stuff from fast mail. And that's it. Like, I don't, I don't have to touch anything else after that. And once it's there and fast mail has got a cool little button that you click and they'll, they'll look at your uh, DNS records and, you know, give you a green check mark if everything's good or a red X, if it's not good. Um, 
once you set that up, you just make email accounts in the interface. Like I literally go to settings, go to uh, email addresses and aliases, and I can either just make an email alias that forwards into my main email box, or uh, there's a bunch of other things that you can do with the system, and you can make it pretty complex if you want, but my use cases are simple. So I've got a bunch of email addresses that all dump into one single box that I look at at Fastmail. Uh, oh, and, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well. If you wanted to set up, like, let's say you have a, a family. Let's say you've got, like, five people all with, you know, different email addresses, and you want them to have different logins, and people can't look at their own stuff. That would be five different users. So that's kind of what you have to look at, is looking at it on the login level, not, like, the amount of email addresses. Because one person, okay. one login, can have as... I, I'm sure there's a theoretical limit somewhere. I haven't hit it with my 12, and they're, they don't make a big deal of, like, accounting uh, or, or telling you you're using too much, so I don't really worry about that. Um, but, like, one of those people can have 100 addresses, and the next person can have, like, 45 of those, and so on and so forth. But the logins are the thing you're paying for in FastMail. I, I, that, that makes sense now. Okay. So the other one I just saw was iCloud. If you one of Apple's features is if you have iCloud Plus, so the cheapest iCloud Plus is a buck a month, one dollar per user per month. You can get, and I, I do recommend that you pay that. You can get the same thing. You can have it at your domain. It's probably just one email account for one person, but you can have it. And and I I'm not I don't know if I would recommend you doing that unless. Like you said, it's just for a very specific purpose. It's for some like account recovery, something or whatever it is. But that is another option if you just want to keep that for very certain things. Yeah, the if you're already existing and living and fully bought into the Apple ecosystem, moving your domain mail to iCloud Plus probably isn't the worst idea in the world. Um, you know, depending on your use case. Um, the, the one thing I will say of Apple, and they have gotten better uh, in, in the past five years or so, but honestly, especially moving from a Google ecosystem into an Apple ecosystem, their web services leave a lot to be decided. They're simply not great. They're fine. It's functional. iCloud does work, but they're kind of janky is the best way to put it um if you're used to google systems and and used to them you know kind of working and and gelling together and meshing well and being easy to discover and use and click around on various platforms um moving to apple kind of feels like a downgrade um in in the web services department uh it is very apparent that they they operate from like the mac or now the ios device level Right. So if you want the best experience, you're going to manage your Apple stuff using an Apple device. Um, and if you go outside of that, like to a web browser, yeah, it's kind of a downgrade. So so as you said, it's it is but it is an option there. And then the other big one, we love Microsoft 365. They're also five dollars per user per month because you have to go to the business side. Um yeah, that's that actually really surprised me because I was I was looking at 365 and I was searching around for domain, and it turns out that yeah, if you have a family Microsoft uh, or Office 365 account, you can't attach a domain to them, at least not the support articles I was reading. They they definitely push you towards the business account side of things. So five bucks per user per month. With that said, so you have to make your decision on here. It's it's there's another aspect of this that that we were talking about first before. First, it's the security if you said you're getting locked out. But second, it's it's the fact that Google is starting to kill literally everything that we hold oh so dear to our to our. So for example, a lot of people paid for um for AOL back in the day because of that at AOL email address. So the diehards would pay that 20 bucks a month. Remember, it was like 20 bucks, it was like $25 a month to have AOL on top of your existing internet. So as as cable and DSL uh, propagated, it was 
they were people were paying that and then AOL lost so much from people they said fine you can keep your email if that's what's going to get you to come to our website and everything you can keep that but another thing you've experienced this and we've said this your Comcast email if you leave your a Comcast area or an Optimum email if you're in the if you're by me an Optimum email or you leave a FiOS email or you leave AT and T your email goes away so we first said decentralize that and go to a, a common per, uh, carrier like Gmail like we said or Outlook or whatever it is now they're locking you in you either pay them or you have to go somewhere else and it's just one of those really sour tastes because Google is starting to really do this a lot harder. It's they killed all the fringe services that you may not heard of. Now they're coming after all the all the 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 ones that they gave out so long ago that Google Photos. Like uh, I'm 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 rambling here. They're going out for all those people that were getting these free services and they're trying to extract money. Google Photos, for example, it was unlimited, unlimited. Now it's like, oh, it's part of your Google account. Pay us Google One service. We'll give you all these great things, but we want twenty dollars a year from you, or whatever it is. It's just, it's, it's getting too much. Yeah, and I, I got caught up in that. I, um, I've got a family account, and my grandmother takes roughly four to five thousand photos per day. Um, and uh, we, we had a Picasso web account, which became Google Photos, which became part of Google One, and now I've got you know, this, this charge to make sure that her photos are indeed backed up, synchronized to the cloud. And, you know, I don't want to have to try to recover data from a broken phone if she tosses it in a pool or lake or whatever. Um, and it, it seems like that has just grown and grown and grown. And now more services in Google are less of the, we're putting this out as a way to engender trust and, you know, happiness and positive thoughts in our brand and more of a, Every single product has got to have its own revenue line or else it's getting the app. Um, honestly, I'm kind of terrified for Google Voice. Um, that, that cannot be cheap to run. Um, now, we haven't heard anything on that. The, the other part of this move away from Google Apps that you have to keep in mind is if you have tried to make that your main Google account, and luckily I was super lazy back in the day, so I just stuck with at gmail.com for 99% of everything I was doing. Um, but if you have like Google Play Store purchases on the movies, books, music, etc., um, Google doesn't have a great way of migrating that away or migrating that to a Gmail account. Uh, and that's what a lot of the fervor has been around is like, hey, if if you have centralized this like Google apps for your domain as your Google account, that's the main thing you use. And you have a bunch of Play Store purchases and other stuff wrapped up in that ecosystem. There's a chance you might not be able to get that out. Um, there are theoretical workarounds. I have not tried this. I don't have the ability to try this. I don't have purchases on apps accounts. Um, but you might be able to create a family share and then add that new Gmail account to it and share things over, but it doesn't work for music and it only works for some purchases. And like, it's, it's a big tangled mess. And honestly, this sunsetting of, of what was a free service is going to cause a decent amount of shakeup for a lot of people. Uh, and it, it's really unfortunate. You said it best before the show. You and I both were Google Glass uh, people. We paid $1,500 to beta test a product, and Google killed it. And and while we're talking about email here, I want to remind, and Google Voice, we did we did do that. We did get hit with, uh, with Google Glass. And it's one of those things that I've now become very, very hard into trying new products. Because unless it gets critical mass or I'm less I'm willing to pay for it, I'm not I'm not sure it's going to stay. That that's literally what it is. How is it gonna stay? Is Signal gonna stay? I don't know. Um Moxie Marlon Spike stepped down. He's probably going to mobile coin, but some are they gonna start charging for signal? Maybe they can't get their money. But yet I'm willing to pay for it. Um 
the free tier may be so terrible that they're forcing people to get up there. And so I, I start getting nervous about that because people are starting to say, hey, uh, we want money. And what they'll start doing is they'll start monetizing the, the ad revenue for that. So they're going to start through either throwing ads into it or they're going to start selling tracking data. And that also really scares me. So this email, this email thing is a nail in the, is the first nail for us. It's the last nail. But if you're one of these people, guess what? Now you've experienced what we've experienced and, and that is going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And I hope you learn to move forward with, with something that sticks there. And I don't know the answer. You said you went to fast mail and you're happy. Um, I am. Uh, there's, um, there's options out there and, and don't let us tell you that these are the only options options there are a million different email calendaring providers that work with custom domains like it's it chances are if you have a custom domain your domain registrar offers that product as an add-on you know monthly surcharge or yearly surcharge for your domain um i i know my domain registrar is always like oh hey do you want to check this box to add you know a five gig email account and most of the time because i'm paying fast mail the answer is no uh, but there are people who have done that for, and you know it it works. It's not fancy, it's not flashy, but it's email at a domain that you don't have to manage. Now, there is something I do want to bring up that we didn't talk about beforehand, which is, hey, it's just email. How hard can it be to self-host? And honestly, if you want to take that up, if you want a project, if you want to try to run a mail server for a little bit and figure out how all those pieces connect and how everything works together. It's a fantastic learning experience. But please, please view it as a learning experience. The last thing you want is to be waiting for that offer letter to come into your inbox. And then you realize, oh no, my relay host went down and now my, all my emails are gone. Or, or you know, I didn't have a clean IP address and now everything I send to people is marked as spam. Like, there's a lot of work that goes into reputation management and email is just kind of a cesspool because of spammers. So hand rolling and hand managing and self hosting your email is an option, but it is potentially a lot of work on your part and a decent amount of research. If you're looking at a learning experience, by all means go for it. But if you need this email to be, really functional and stable and hands off and easy, um, go to a provider. I, I don't want to bash on self hosting. Um, I, I did most of my early learning, uh, of my, my tech career through just self hosting and putting together stuff on my own. But email is one of those things where it's, it's a whole, whole lot of work for a very negligible benefit. Um, and frankly, I would spend more. I, I would rather spend the money than the time. Um, but if that's not your case, uh, you know, self-hosting is an option. There, and there are plenty of like one-click open-source products out there to get you up and running with, you know, Dovecot uh, and various, you know, CalDAV services and webmail. And there's a, a bunch of really nice products out there that are easy to set up. Um, just be aware it's some work on an ongoing basis. It's not like work to get it set up and then you forget about it. It's work to keep everything rolling. I mean, if you're on Android, Google will serve you. Gmail will serve you for all that. So if you're on Android, I'm sure that will stay free and everything else. The very basics. If you're on Apple, Apple's offerings, like we said, are real, are, are very good. If your family is mixed on there, it, you will be fine. If you need something more than that, and that I really want to take us to the last point is ask yourself, how much of this do you really need? Like we, we were talking about email as for a security thing. I don't get that much email anymore. Like honestly, it's I'm all my communications are through different messaging apps. And I keep on saying this. I dropped all the newsletters. I dropped all the the marketing nonsense. I get very little email. And yes, work's a different story. We'll throw work out. But for normal things, I get very little email. And it's generally like Amazon orders or receipts from the local store or some sort of receipt or some sort of acknowledgement. But other than that, 
And that doesn't matter where that's at. It really doesn't. You want to keep it at Gmail? That's fine. If you have to move, move to something that's free, that gives you a little bit of storage space. Um, but that's for most people. If you're more than that and you know who you are, then yes, maybe paying for it is not the worst idea. And if you want to talk about any of this stuff or any other security or even non-security related topic, uh, feel free to join our Signal group. Um, if you want to hear me uh, you know, rail about uh, the beauty and wonderful simplicity of handing a company a fistful of dollars and getting some goods and services in return, then uh, you know, please join. And we will talk about simple business models that are very much appreciated in, in this era of advertising and subscriptions and all that nonsense. So with that said, we are done. Uh, I got nothing else for you. So with that said, let's have a good night and hopefully we'll see you next week. If not, we'll be back. Have a good night, everybody. See ya. Bye.